Let's talk about sampling distributions. Sampling distributions are one of the foundations of inference, that is, hypothesis testing and confidence intervals, so it's really important to understand them. The definition of a sampling distribution of any statistic, in this case, let's use a sample mean or x-bar. So the sampling distribution of x-bar is the distribution of all values taken by the sample mean in all possible samples of the same size. In other words, it's kind of the ideal distribution that you would get if you could choose every single possible sample, compute a mean from each of those samples, and then look at the distribution of all of those means. Let's do that for this example. Consider this, one, two, three, four, to be our population. We want to look at all samples of size two. Again, we're trying to find the sampling distribution of x-bar. Well, to do this, we're going to have to look at every single possible sample of size 2. Here are all the possible samples of size 2 without any repeats and sampling without replacement. That means we can't have a sample of, say, 2, 2, for example. Let's compute the mean for every single one of these. So we want to find an x-bar for every single one of our samples. So we're going to find the sample mean for each set. Let's do that quickly. We get one and a half, two, two and a half, two and a half, three, and three and a half. Let's make a frequency table for this. These are all the different values of x-bar. This is the frequency at which they happen. Our possible values are 1 and a half, 2, 2 and a half, 3, and 3 and a half. All of them happen once except for the 2 and a half. And let's try to make a histogram of these values. Do a quick sketch. So 1 and a half happens one time. 2 also happens one time. 2 and a half is the one that happened twice. And then 3 and 3 and a half both happened once. This is the sampling distribution of size 2 from the population 1, 2, 3, 4. Again, it's a sampling distribution of a sample mean or of x bar. On the AP formula sheet, you're given two formulas for sampling distributions, the mean of x-bar and the standard deviation of x-bar. Here are the two formulas. The mean of x-bar is always equal to the true mean. That means the mean of the sampling distribution will be equal to the mean of this distribution. Standard deviation is always equal to the standard deviation over the square root of n. That's a quick sampling distribution of size 2 from a population 1, 2, 3, and 4. Let's talk about the central limit theorem, or CLT. One thing to keep in mind about CLT is this only works for means. Here's what the central limit theorem says. As n becomes large, the sampling distribution of the sample mean becomes approximately normal. This is one of the major results and major theorems of the course. Well, n being large, we need to set a value for that. So the one that we're going to use most often is n greater than or equal to 30. This will be our kind of magic number for using the central limit theorem. It turns out it doesn't always have to be 30, depending on how skewed the original distribution is, so how skewed the population is. But 30 seems to be a pretty good number uh, to work with for almost all populations. Now, this new normal distribution is going to have a mean and a standard deviation that we just talked about 
on the previous page. So the mean of the new distribution of x bar will be equal to the true mean, which is mu. And the standard deviation of the sampling distribution of x bar will be equal to the standard deviation over the square root of n. These will be our new mean and standard deviation of our approximately normal distribution. Take a look at these three sets of pictures. We have a couple of different populations that are up at the top. Here's population 1, 2, and 3. And this progression of curves shows what happens when we increase the sample size and then take a look at the sampling distribution for that new sample size. We can see after two observations, we still don't have that normal distribution. After even five, it's getting closer and closer to normal. And at 30, we are approximately normal. That's what the central limit theorem does for us. It allows us to use the normal distribution whenever we're sampling with a large number for n. Let's say n bigger than or equal to 30. Let's use the central limit theorem to actually do a question. The heights of American men have a mean of 70 inches, so that's my mu, and a standard deviation of 3 inches, that's sigma. We'll use the parameters because we're talking about a population. We want the probability that a simple random sample of 40 men have a mean height greater than 71 inches. Well, we know that n is equal to 40, which is greater than or equal to 30. So the sampling distribution of the sample mean, or of x bar, is approximately normal. This sampling distribution is going to have a new mean and standard deviation, so the mean of the sampling distribution is equal to the true mean, which is 70 inches. Standard deviation of the sampling distribution is standard deviation over the square root of m. These formulas are on your formula sheet. So that's going to be 3 over the square root of 40. And when you plug it into your calculator, you get 0.4743. Let's use this new mean and standard deviation to actually do the problem. We want the probability that x bar, the sample mean, is greater than 71 inches. Since we're talking about the normal distribution, we're going to do a z-score problem. So this is the probability that z is greater than 71, take away the mean, which is 70, divided by the standard deviation, 0.4743. We'll plug it into the calculator. This is the probability that z is greater than to two decimal points, this is 2.11. Right, let's draw our normal curve. Here's 2.11. We're going greater than, so we want this probability above 2.11. You have two options here. You can use your Z table in your formula packet. If you're going to use your z table, we got to do 1 minus the probability that corresponds to 2.11 because that gives you the area to the left. Or you can use normal CDF on the calculator. Either way, we'll get 0 0.0174. That's the probability that in a sample of size 40, the mean of that sample is greater than 71 inches. Look at the second question. It says, can we find the probability that one or a randomly selected man has a height greater than 74 inches? This would be just the probability that x is greater than 74, if x represents the height of one man. Well, we only know the mean and standard deviation of the distribution of, of the heights of American men. We don't know that it's normally distributed. So we really can't do this question. We're going to say no. If we knew it was normal to begin with, then we could do the problem. Since we don't know that, we would just be guessing as to what the distribution looks like. n is only equal to 1 in this problem, so central limit theorem does not apply. So this is not a question that we can do. Again, we knew the distribution for a simple random sample of size 40 was approximately normal by the central limit theorem. For just one observation, we cannot use CLTs.